Okay. So you feel that the whole world has thrown everything plus the kitchen sink at you. And you feel like giving up. But I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. The whole body of Christ is going through something right now. I don't care where you are, I don't care how long you've been saved, we are under attack. And we are going to continue to be under attack until the Lord comes and returns. And this is the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. So don't feel alone if you're being attacked from all sides. When you feel the walls are crumbling around you, know that it's for the greater good. God has an escape route for all of us when he returns. We are to look forward to his return and try to remain peaceful and humble and live humble lives until he returns. I'm right there with you, folks. I'm going through it, too. In every single way you can imagine, I am going through it. But it's the it's the going through that makes us stronger. And when we come out on the other end, we shall be glorified. I'm Brother Christopher Christopher. God bless each and every one of you out there. Remember, you're the heads and not the tails. If God can use me, he can use you too. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like me. I've always wanted to live in the neighborhood. Only that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath said
set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. God, thank you for the reading of the word. Amen, Juan, as you may not know, uh, it is a place of dwelling. Many times as Christians, we don't, we, we're not in the place where we need to be. And once we find out the place where we need to be, we start moving and operating uh, from a different area. Your anointing uh, is, is, is very unique, and maybe you don't know that or not, but your anointing is very unique and it's very special. It is an anointing that God has given you as a, as a weapon, not the weapons that he has formed for us but the weapons against the enemy. See, Satan is anti. He's against anything that is of Christ, anything that, that, that has anything to do with God and your spiritual growth. The word says the soul with the soul what a seed. The seed is the word. That's what he don't want to grow. He don't want to flourish. He do not want it to, to produce what God intended for it to produce. And if you look at St. John chapter 15, verse 8, your fruit is supposed to remain because of your anointing. Your anointing uh, can only be driven away by neglect. The Bible said, be careful that the enemy come and remove your candlestick. The candlestick or the candle represents life. So if you come and remove your life or your anointing, you have absolutely nothing to work with. So as we look at this tonight, David wanted to show us some some things. There are five things I really want to touch on tonight, but I, I doubt if we get a chance to. But nevertheless, we're going to start it just in case. If you look at Psalm 91, and we're going to start in verse number one, we'll read that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, uh, some points as we go. Um, it's very important that you know what season it is. We are in warfare season. Now, you may not know that. You may not even heard that. Maybe, maybe your life right now is somewhat comfortable, but trust me, it won't be that way long. Because the Bible says that in the latter days, the enemy is going to get greater, or sin is going to get greater than it's ever gotten. Look around now, look what's happening now. Look, look, look how sin is on the rampant. It seems like no justice is being done. It, it seems like people are getting killed and nobody is going to jail. You know, they just lying dead in the streets, don't matter. You know, uh, I happened to watch a video last night uh, on cops, and it was just amazing what I saw. You know, and it's not just in uh, Las Vegas, it's not just in Los Angeles, it's in corporate America. It, it seems like the ones that have the authority to do right are doing wrong. You know, uh, because the Bible said time will come when they will believe a strong delusion. A delusion is something that appears to be real, but it's not. It's just a delusion, you know. It's sort of like when you're in a desert and you're, you're so thirsty, you, you, you're, you're paranoid, you're out of your head. So anything you see that's shining is going to look like water. But the closer you get to it, the more sand appears. So that's what's going on now. Sand is getting so great that the, the law enforcer, the one that are hired and paid by you and I, our taxes, are not doing their job. And, and then when they do their job, they're doing it and mishandling the way they do it. If there's, if there's a right and wrong, we do everything. You know, and if, if we as Christians, if we don't start standing up now and literally stand up, and then after we have stood up, then we have to do what the Bible says. If my people which are called by my name. See, we got, we got power that, that we're not even using. You know, we have been given uh, authority over the enemy. If, if, if Satan is doing anything in, in your house or, or in your surrounding and you ain't doing nothing about it, you ain't using your power. Because you have the power to run him off. And not only that, it only takes 
But one word, that word is resistance. Mm. Resist the devil and he'll flee. That word resist is, is an old Greek word which means ignore. To ignore. Ignore him. Don't, like he ain't even there. And once, once he realizes that you're not thinking about him, he'll move on to somebody else that he can use. Because he automatically knows he cannot use you now. He can't use you because number one, you realize what he's doing. And after realizing what he's doing, you're standing up with that which is right. And Christ said that in the last day, you, you, you're going to see trouble like that before. We, we are living in trouble times. I expect all this stuff to go on. I expect it to go. Why? Because the Bible says it. If the Bible did not say it, then I would have some, some issues with it. But I don't have any issues with it. I have issues with the fact that the Christians are not standing up being Christians. They're not fighting the warfare with Satan. You know, you somebody got to be on the wall. Somebody got to warn. Somebody got to blow the trumpet. Who would it be? You know, because we we now got such a such a hectic schedule. The Bible says that the reason that the schedule is so hectic is that Satan is trying to wear us out. He'll work you to death. You'd be so tired. You'd be so drug out. You drag into church and you drag into praise. You drag into read because you ain't got no strength. He don't wear you out. You don't fought him all day long. It don't seem like you have not a, a, you know avail. But you have, trust me. He's not going to let him take you over. Don't ever worry about that. He said he won't even let your feet slip. You know, so so when you're going through, don't, don't worry about what he's doing. Fret not thyself because of the evil doing. They're going to soon be cut down. Right now, he's on, his time is, 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 is ticking very fast. And he knows. So that's why he's doing what he's doing in the churches. Churches of cross corporate America. Uh, and a whole bunch, bunch of issues in trouble. But then we as Christians, we can't let that stop us. We got we gotta get up, we got to get that get up and go spirit. Like I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm, I'm gonna do it because you say do it. And we'll find out so watch this tonight as we teach you this particular lesson tonight from Psalm 91. As I said, this is a a a, a place of dwelling. Uh, when when we read it you'll see. You know uh, what God is talking about. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, 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 notice what he said. Now, there, there's a word there that we use quite frequently in corporate America, which is dwelling or you know dwelling. That is a place where you spend the majority of your time. And what he's really saying, he that dwelleth in the place of God, which is in God's presence, or one say the church, one, one, one theologian said, we hide ourselves within the sanctuary, and Satan can't find us. But what you have to understand is that the, the church is for Satan good. He ain't going to the bar. He got them. You know, he, he ain't going to these clubs and stuff. Around. He got the people already. He's coming to church to find out who is not paying attention. Who do not know how to use the anointing? Who do not know how to come to the altar and then fall on the knees and ask God for forgiveness and get up and dust yourself off and get back in the saddle? Because He'll make you think because what you have done, you can't get forgiven of it. Mm. And that's the biggest lie that ever told. Why do you think Jesus died? He died that you may have a right to the tree of life. Mm. And not only that, but that your sins may be remitted. That, that God will forgive you of your sins. So when, when he come in and, and, and try to uh, cause us not to stand, we ought to stand the more. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Why is it secret? Now we go back to the heart. The heart is, is the secret place. If you got God here and have put him there, then David say, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. If you read and study of number the word of God, you have enough ammo to put any demon to come your way. And not only that, but you'll walk in total victory. And when I say total victory, I'm not saying you ain't going to have no issues. I'm not saying you ain't going to fall, but total victory means total dominion. And you got dominion over that. You know, you can go to God, you can cry out to God, He'll forgive you whatever He is. You know, and, and one thing that we have to realize is that the secret place, a lot of times, he referred to it in the scripture, said, go into your secret closet. That is a place that 
that you mostly have designated to meet God. May it be uh, somewhere in your house, uh, in your car, wherever. But the, the thing that he's talking about here is that in your heart. Put God here. If, you, if God is here, then the treasures that are going to be found here are going to be treasures from heaven. Because where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. And if you want to be with Jesus, then you got all that pertains to him is going to be here. So you hide it in here. That's one place that you got to realize that Satan can't get to. That's your heart. That's the, that's what issues like. Your heart. Your heart pumps blood throughout your entire body. You can lose a lot of other uh, vital parts on your body, but you cannot lose your heart and remain in. You had those that got even that got heart transplants that don't live long. Because the heart they have don't belong to them. And sometimes the, 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 the alter, the altercation of the medication that they give you don't work. You see? And you live for a little while and then you die. But he's talking about spiritually here. Don't die spiritually. Don't allow what's coming up on the earth to kill you. Mm. Because he said that the things that are coming on the earth, people's hearts are beginning to fail them. Now, 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 you can look at that in two, two aspects. One of them is natural, but the other one is truly spiritual. People cannot take what's coming up on the earth. You know what they're doing? They're leaving the churches. They're leaving God. And the very source that they need to sustain them, they're walking away from it. And as though it ain't no more good. Like it has no more power. The power that God has, you can, you can never lose it. You can deny it. You can resist it. But as long as you're on the earth, the power is still available to you. You just got to get into a position to receive it. Everybody don't don't, don't receive it. Uh, just as by bowing when they need. Because that, that's a form. That's fashion. People, sometimes people come out to order because everybody's stuck. They, they, some of them don't come looking for nothing. Because they're standing there, they're not praying. They're not surrendering by lifting their hands up. They're not saying anything to God. They're not speaking the other the language. They just hear because somebody else came. But that ain't the reason to come. You ought to have a reason to come to this altar. One of the reasons God enabled you to make it here, and you're here and you're alive. You ought to thank God for being alive. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Nobody can get above God. There is no other God, so don't 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 be fooled by the hype. You know, it ain't but one God, and Satan tremble and fear that one God. Now he may make you think he's big and bad, and Mr. Big Stuff, but let me tell you something: he's scared of God, and he's not only scared of God, but he's afraid of the saints and what the saints can do. Because if we pull our powers together and unite ourselves as one. Oh man, you talking about somebody on the run? He gonna run past where he lives. Really? <laughs> because number one, we we all together, and when you come together as a as a force, then you're a force that, that can't be reckoned with. And, and that's why Satan don't don't jump on you like he really wants to, because he can't. God only allowed him to go so far. You know the story of Job, right? He would have never attacked Job if he wouldn't have believed in his heart. The only reason that Job served God is because of material things. Right. He believed that. And God said, well, I'm not, I might as well go to you to follow them lies. So I'm going to go ahead and let you prove it to yourself. Now, I, I, Take the stuff and don't touch your soul. When he took everything Job had, Job did the ultimate thing that God wanted him to do. Job said, nigga, I came into the world. Nigga, I leave. But bless me the name of the Lord. So he realized that God had very little to do with all that was going on. And he realized that the same God could give him what he had. And give it in more love, more abundant. Because you know why? He said, I give you life and that more abundantly. That's more than what you have now. When you lose anything for God's sake, he give it back to you double fold. If the enemy take anything from you that you deem to be God, he give it back to you in double fold. See, that, that's, that's why we shouldn't have no issue with serving God. We shouldn't fear nobody. The psalm would say, I have no fear. I fear nobody. The Lord is the strength of my life. And I, I have no. Then he asked the person, what shall I fear? If God is the 
the strength of my life and my life, who am I be afraid of? Because the only thing they can do if he allows them to is kill me. But they can't do nothing else with the soul. Right? See, the soul belongs to God. And he better not touch that. And if it's within God's will, he'll raise you back up. You know the stories in the Bible, all the people God raised back up. Come on, please. I, I don't doubt God in no area. You see that dwelling. You have to make your dwelling place in the secret places of God, which is the sanctuary. Your heart. Let your heart be open to what goes on in the sanctuary. Do you know? I was I was studying in in Kings and how they how when they go to worship, how 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 those people got themselves prepared for worship. That's the one thing we don't do. We don't prepare for worship. We just come here and plop down in the chair and they say, open the Bible up, you open the Bible up, but you don't, you don't see for no revelation. You don't see for no move of God. You don't ask God to do nothing. You just sit there and drink out you glad to go home. But then when you really calm down, ask yourself, what did you get? What did you receive out of what all that went on? Because in every one of us, our candles should be a little brighter after we leave here. Our life should be brighter after we leave here. 